I'm, I'm pretty, uh, I'm a pretty open book, you know, like, I, I don't really hold much back. So I feel like anything that they hear me say right now, like whatever y'all are hearing, this is me. Like, that's who I am. So start to finish, I played baseball as a kid growing up. And in my mind, I was like, I, this is what I want to do now. I want to play baseball. It was my first love, honestly. So I went back to it and went to college. I went to junior college. I got cut from the ju first junior college I went to. I didn't make the team. So I switched junior colleges. I made that team. I went to a university after that. My son, me and my wife, our son was born when we were at the university my junior year. And uh, I didn't play that year, I had labrum surgery. So my redshirt junior year I played and I ended up getting drafted by the Reds. I played with them for four, uh, roughly four years. Uh, I got released, I went to Indie Ball, uh, Winnipeg Gold Eyes. And then I went to Venezuela. I came back, that's when I like walked in the office with the Indians and uh, fortunately they, uh, James Harris, their farm director, gave me an opportunity to throw a bullpen. They ended up signing me, which was pretty cool. Uh, they kept me for like a month, month and a half, and then they uh, sold my contract to Mexico because I'm a dual citizen. So I went and I played in Tijuana around like June 27th, I think is when I signed with the Mariners. And then a month later, after getting to AAA with the Mariners, they called me up. So I got my first taste of the big leagues. I got to watch playoff baseball, which was awesome. Uh, they put me on the taxi squad. So being around playoff baseball, I feel like this year, you know, when we do make it, I'll, I'll be able to at least have kind of that feeling of like I've been there, even though I haven't pitched there. Um, and then this year, the, the Mariners had DFA'd me and, and thank God, uh, you know, Red Sox picked me up and claimed me and I'm here now doing this interview. <laughs> I was living in Phoenix, I was driving, I didn't drive Uber, I drove Lyft. So I was driving Lyft and doing stuff like that. And uh, the man who drafted me, his name's Rex De La Nuez, uh, he told me, he's like, hey, you live, in, you live in Phoenix. Like, I know you've been sending out emails and stuff to teams, like, just try to walk in. And I was like, for real? And he's like, yeah, like, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? And so I would just look up the farm directors of whatever facility I was gonna go into. And I would just try to go in and tell them I was a ball player. So I'd get past security. And um, I would park my car far away because I was driving like a 2001 Cadillac and I had, I had like a crack all the way across my windshield and I, someone stole my emblem and the hubcaps. So like my car was kind of like, you know, rough. So <laughs> I would like park around the corner and walk up to him I was a ball player. And I just don't have my player card yet. And the only place that I actually got past where she couldn't work, she didn't know how to work the phone yet. And she took me to the back to go meet James Harris. And I walked in, I just told him like, no, I'm a, I'm a ball player. I just don't play for you. You know, like I'm a free agent. And uh, he, he thought highly of me doing that. And he's like, hey, this, this guy wants to play. So he told me to sit down. We talked for a little bit. Um, and he, he's like, I'm gonna do my background on you. And if, if all checks out, like you'll get a call. And uh, he reached out to my agent, told me I had a bullpen the next day. So I threw a bullpen and they signed me. And uh, that's probably the grindiest thing I've ever done, you know? The experience that baseball has taken me through and life has taken me through, I, I'm trying to just cherish every single day. Now, like even if I was playing in indie ball in Mexico right now, I would have the same personality because I know that what's true today may not be true tomorrow. Like just the fact that I'm even alive today, you know, is, uh, is big for me like if, if you're alive and you're breathing you got an opportunity you know and that's the way i try to look at life i try to live my life through that through gratitude and i got my little here yeah, i got something in here yeah it's my little gratitude rock you know what i mean and, and i take this with me every day because i'm trying to like my hardest to be grateful for everything i know that i'm good you know i'm breathing i'm healthy like my family's healthy my son my wife i'm, I'm good like it was even tough when I was drafted initially because uh, I, I signed for five thousand dollars. I, me and my wife had already had our son, and uh, we we moved to an apartment. But my wife was working full time. She put my son in daycare in the morning. 
6 a.m. and she would go work all day, a job that she didn't like, uh, just to get back by six to pick him up. And so like, she was grinding it out back home and I wasn't making enough money in the minor leagues to fly them out. So there was like three years there where I didn't see them throughout the entire baseball season in the minor leagues. And it was only like, thank God for FaceTime, you know? Like I could FaceTime them, but that's all the seeing of my son and my wife that we had. So it was, it was tough. Like it was really tough. I would, in the high A, like I gave pitching lessons before the game a couple of days a week. Like uh, when the other team would hit batting practice, my coach let me have players come in like young kids and I'd give pitching lessons to make extra money to pay for food. I was willing to do anything to make it to where I'm at now. And, and I'm here now and it feels like for me, if anyone else sees this, I hope that they understand like if you really want something, you really want it, like your actions gotta, you know, measure up to it as well, but you can you can achieve it. We got, like I said, we got like real baseball fans. Like they, they just hype, like they're hype. They'll get on you sometimes from the bullpen. Like if, if we're in a rough patch, they'll talk their trash. But like, I know it's coming from a good spot because they just want to win, you know? So I, I love the fans here. We got a good group of guys. I, I like to use the term dogs. We got a clubhouse full of dogs. And I feel like that's why we've been able, if we hit a rough patch, we've been able to rally off a bunch of wins. You know, after that is because there's no quit on this team. Like from top to bottom, veteran to rookie, everybody in here is pushing for the same thing. And that, that includes obviously our staff and front office. Like we all have that goal of we want a championship. It's not. This isn't a team that's just out here like, we're just happy to play. No, we want to win. And we're going to find out, uh, you know, a way to win. The lefty Bernardino gets the call and he's been outstanding. Running, running in and like just looking up and seeing that in left field. And like, for me, that's what I always thought about of, of Fenway is like the green monster. How big does it really look? And Cause I, I came here as a kid one time and uh, I mean, it looked like three times the size it looks now, but it's still like really big. So that was cool to see that, just the history here in this city and with this team. I'm playing on a field that guys played on when baseball was first created, you know? It, it's a good feeling. Swung on and missed on a breaking ball. Big swing and a miss, he strikes him out. Swing and a miss, spun him around on the curveball. And he struck him out. How about a couple of strikeouts from Brendan Bernardino? I want to stick. I want to. I want to be a big leaguer to the to my career is done. Like, I, I want to play in this league until you know most players dream this to play until we say we're done, right? Like, okay, I, I want to retire now. That's that's the goal. Uh, that's one of the goals. Another goal is just I want to be. You know, I'm just gonna say I want to be one of the best pitchers in the league, if not the best. You know, uh, I know I got some some ways to go and some work to do. But uh, I'm going to be putting the work in and we'll see how far it takes me.